Folks, my next guest is a brilliant and talented three-time Grammy winner who I am proud to call a collaborator and a friend. Please welcome Chance the Rapper. So nice to see you again. Great to see you, Stefan. Um, thank you so much uh, for people who, who might have missed it. Thank you for doing. You did uh, a rap in the middle of our Emmys yes. opening number. That was fun to work on. No, thank you for including me. It was. Uh, I liked it. It was very organic. You know. It was. You, we we had uh, we had written some bars for you. You showed up and you went. Okay, I see what you're doing here, but I would like to inject some meaning into this. <laughs> and then we started going on the things that meant something to you. Yeah. You know? Broke it down piece by piece. By piece. Yeah. At one point, uh, you said, what do white people care about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was because I had gotten my fill. I was like, all right, I've listed the things that black people care about. Let's have some inclusion. Well, we said this. We said, like, <laughs> we saw you. And you, you said it didn't want to just be about your concerns, which was That's great. That's what it's about, access for everybody. Exactly. Now, there's some people in Chicago uh, who've started something called uh, ChanoForMayor.com mm. who want you to run for mayor of Chicago. D does politics at all appeal to you? No. Not at all. Not at all. You know, I like to, I like to make the, the, the separation between the two things. I do not like politics. I think government, in a certain way, is necessary, and it should always be a fluid thing that's changing. Politics is, like, really fast, and it's about popularity and um, strategy in a lot of ways, which I can admire, but it's not about, you know, it's not, it doesn't make the same change that, you know, legislation makes. And so I try not to get caught up in politics or any, you know, entertaining things, you know? I try and, like, keep my eyes focused on, you know, the things that really affect us systemically, which, uh, which is where the law is. So to a certain degree, I have to be, you know, up to date on what's going on politically, but I try not to let it phase me because it's a lot of, you know, it's in the air. You guys feel the same way? All right. And politics is, politics is, uh, it's sticky. It yeah. can get on you. It can get on you. Yeah, if you get too close, it gets on you, it and gets... then you gotta get the gasoline to get the tar off. <laughs> now, Obviously. but you, you do, do believe in, in making change and contributing to our public institutions because you have created a fund that just donated, you raised and have donated $2.2 million to Chicago Public Schools. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the name of the organization that you created, and what are, the, what are the goals of this donation? Okay, so Social Works is uh, the nonprofit I work with in Chicago, and we work on uh, uh, civic engagement and, uh, and, and education, youth, and, uh, youth education. And so, uh, yeah, one of our uh, initiatives this year was support CPS. And uh, basically, due to, like, budget impasses and a lot of, like we were just talking about politics, people going back and forth, people that care about uh, keeping their jobs and not so much about their constituents being happy. The, those people uh, created a budget impasse where Illinois couldn't agree on a state budget. So what they do is they stop funding the important like city, you know, funded and state funded operations. One of them being schools. So our schools went three years underfunded um, before my nonprofit and a lot of um, brave people in Chicago and all over the, the United States stepped in and put a spotlight on it. Um, so one of the things that we did was, like you said, raise a bunch of money for, uh, for a fund called the New Chance Fund, which uh, funds uh, arts and literature programs and uh, all types of things education-wise for different schools. I'm sorry, I'm not really that good at explaining it. So much information. So much information. That's perfectly clear. The main point... That's perfectly clear. The overall point is that nationally, not just in Chicago, we have to look at the way that we fund schools and make sure that there's equity and equality in our kids' education. Is that good? Can I, uh, 
Can I ask you about um, your relationship to your faith and the church growing yeah, up? You, you said that uh, singing is praying twice. Yeah. What, do you, what do you mean by that? Um, well, I mean, it's always great to pray. And when you worship in song, there's just, I don't know, this, uh, you just, you're able to do it with much more fervor, or at least I am. I think I thought I sounded poetic when I said it, and now when you're asking me about it, I'm like, I just, you know, I don't know. I, I, to, me, to, to me, it means the words have their own meaning, but the expression of your heart comes through in the sound in ways that the words cannot capture. The same way that the parables of Christ tell a story that cannot be told, or a lesson that cannot be told in any other way, the sound of the song speaks in a way that words can't reach. That's what it meant to me. That's why we're friends. <laughs> Do you still go to church? I still do go to church. Do you still go? With, is your grandmother still with us? Yes, my grandmother is still with us. She uh, calls me a lot, and uh, I always try and pick up and have some fun little conversation. But yeah, we all still go to church. Do you have a favorite hymn when you go to church? Something that yeah. you'd like to actually transform yourself into, put a beat to, or something like that? Yeah, I love all. The, my favorite, my favorite hymn is uh, is This Is the Day. I don't know that one. This is the day. This is actually I have a better arrangement. The Lord like has made that one. The Lord. Has, this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, rejoice, and be glad in it. That's my. That's my arrangement of it. I like it. Now. Um, <laughs> well, there's a, uh, you're doing a, a new song for us tonight. Yes. A song uh, that no one has ever heard before, other than you and your band and your collaborator, uh, Daniel Caesar. Yeah. And um, uh, what's the song? What's it about? Um, so basically, you know this. I feel like we can just say this on TV. I, so I was supposed to come and perform, and I was going to do Grown Ass Kid which is an unreleased song from Coloring Book. Then I called you guys on Saturday and said I can't do Grown Ass Kid anymore for reasons I don't really want to talk about. But basically, uh, we had to come up with a song in a matter of days, and uh, I wanted to do something fresh. I've been kind of, I've been in, not to lie, I've been in the studio a lot lately. I've been cooking up some yammers uh, <laughs> like this. They're honestly great. And, uh, and I felt like this, you know, I premiered Angels. That was the first new song off Coloring Book. I did that here, so I was like, why not do a new song here for you guys tonight? So, so you wrote this Saturday. Two days ago, yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. We're honored to have you. Thanks, Love man. you, man. Thank Love you again, too. man. Stick around. I promise you. He's going to perform some brand new music you've never heard, but you want to. Be right back. <laughs> 